in Aurora, Colorado, revealing that gang members have seized control of several apartments, allegedly assaulting one of their employees and attempting to shake down the company. You can see the damage to the man's face there on the screen, and you can see the assault bottom right. The company claims nothing substantial has been done to crack down on that gang. Colorado liberal leaders just acting like it's not happening, like Jared Polis. Congressman Matt Gates joins us now to talk about uh, more of this. I mean, this I think this is a big thing that people are voting for in this election, right? Is like, I'm tired of watching this country be run by fools, you know, in, in, in so many different ways. How do we have Trende Aragua operating in, in New York City? We got 11-year-olds putting guns to people's head and taking their wallets. How do we have, you know, Afghan refugees? We're bringing people in that are trying to blow us up on Election Day. Go ahead. Denial is indeed the first stage yeah. of grief, right? And right. the mainstream media and the Democrats in power tell us that it's not real that people who are dangerous and might harm us on Election Day were passed through an insufficient vetting process. And you shouldn't really worry that it's only a few apartment complexes in Colorado who are being overtaken by yeah. this Venezuelan violent gang. And actually, I think that the perspective of American leaders should be that no apartment complexes should be overtaken yeah, by like Venezuelan Vance said, gangs Rett, it's in right. our country. I mean, yeah, Actually, yeah. one is too many. Right. But at the same time, there's a permission structure being set up where a certain amount of violence and danger is acceptable so long as it achieves these social gains of allowing illegal people into our country. And that's not what we signed up for. It's certainly not what voters in these no. swing states have signed up for. It's it's unbelievable. And, and, and let's talk let's talk about this. I, I, I am blown away by this Trende Aragua gang. I mean, th these are some of the most vicious people in the world. And they're coming here and they're setting up shop. They're taking these kids in these migrant camps that we've set up all throughout our cities in, 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 this, in this country. They're turning them into Trende Aragua me members. You've got them running around New York, robbing people. They beat the hell out of this apartment manager in Aurora. They have taken over these apartment complexes, even though it's just a few, they try to tell you. Uh, here's the NYPD assistant chief of detectives revealing the amount of crime being committed by this gang just here in New York City. Take a look. Upwards of 50 robberies, 20 individuals arrested for upwards of 50 robberies with and out of those 20 individuals, every single one of them is on the streets today. So you're walking around, you, you come to New York because your kids want to see Times Square. You get dragged here, you're spending all this money, you're walking down the street, Times Square, you're walking by Bubba Gump shrimp and all this crap that I can't stand in, in Times Square, and you're, you're seeing everything and you got all of a sudden 12 Venezuelan kids run up with knives and one's got a gun and they take everything off of you. Can, I, we've imported this into this country. That's the reality we've imported. You've imported it and you're paying for it. And we're yeah. now seeing the late stages of sanctuary city policy and yeah. sanctuary state policy. When you invite the third world into your community, you get third world consequences. And that's probably not what the people signed up for who no. live in their million dollar penthouses in Manhattan. But that's what's coming to the suburbs of America, the slums of the third world. And it's not by accident. It's not like climate change or the Illuminati somewhere. It's a direct consequence of us allowing our borders to yeah. be open and then the pull factors in our country where we're giving things away to illegals like housing and health care. That's exactly right. I want to get to one more thing. You've, you've recently uh, de demanded communications from the DHS uh, that may relate to Kamala's job as border czar, a FOIA request at the Heritage Oversight Project. Kamala's propagator, Ian Sams, is trying to block those documents from being released. You claim it might violate the Hatch Act. Tell us what, what exactly you're after. Well, we asked yeah. for the documents regarding Kamala Harris's role as border czar, right. and the person who didn't allow us to access those records, who denied them, weeks later ended up working for Kamala Harris's presidential campaign. Right. So we think that when you're transitioning from government office to the campaign office and you're limiting public review of that which is highly dispositive to the operations of government, you've definitely violated the law, certainly the Hatch Act. And why would we allow this? Why wouldn't the yeah. American people want to see the authority that this person was granted and the extent to which that it was violated in allowing the borders to remain open? The things they pull all the time. They, they always have something up their sleeve. That's another one. Congressman Matt Gates, we appreciate you coming on. Oh, great seeing you, Rob. Good to see you. All right.